word about the, the, the uh, reading through the Bible in a year, in the year 2015. It's only four days, you're not behind. So if you haven't started, you only have three days to make up plus today. And you'll really get a blessing out of it. And I have all the different plans back there on the table by the Welcome Center, uh, several different types. And there are also um, Bibles that are already prearranged in daily readings. And because it's New Year's, most, if not all of them, are on sale. So if you want to run by Lifeway or uh, Books a Million um, up at the Strip, you can go to Bed, Bath, and Beyond or something. While you're up there, because they're right next to each other, pick up a Bible, pick up something for the house, and uh, read God's Word and see all the interesting things that it does say and that it doesn't say. With that in mind, Newsweek magazine had an uh, uh, article about the Bibles, and it was titled, So Misunderstood, It's a Sin. I don't recommend that you read it, but if you do come across it and read it, it starts out with a grain of truth or a half truth, and then it takes off from there, but Newsweek article on the Bible is so bad that it should be a sin. But so let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. In it has everything that we need to know you. And it is a guidebook for us. It is a map. And most of all, it is your word and your will revealed to us. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be arrogant or set their hopes on the uncertainty of wealth, but on God, who richly provides us all with things to enjoy. Instruct them to do what is good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good reserve for the age to come, so that they may take a hold of life that is real. All of us have priorities. And they affect how we live life. Priorities affect what comes first in our life. And they show both to us and to others what is really important from the choices that we all make. A group of friends went deer hunting <clears throat> And muzzle loader season just opened up again in Ohio. But a group of friends went hunting and they and they paired off by twos for the day. And they were to return to camp at, that night and share their adventures and and hopefully their uh, their deer. Well, that night one of the hunters returns to camp alone, staggering under the weight of the 200-pound deer that he's carrying. And the other hunters all ask him, well, where's Bob? And the man that came in by himself said, well, he had a stroke of some kind, and he's a couple miles back up on the trail. And the other hunters were kind of shocked by this, and they asked, why, why did you leave Bob laying 
out on the trail and bring the deer back in. He said it was it was a tough call, but nobody's going to steal Bob. <laughs> That may be true, truer than, than we think, but priority. Whether we think about it or not, whether we agree with, whether you agree with me on this or not, we all live according to priorities. A priority is something that has first importance in our life. It's those things that we place a higher value on than other things. Well, the Bible gives us and teaches us priorities, both ones of God and ones of men. So here we are in the year 2015. We're beginning a new year, and it's usually a time that we have resolutions, uh, the ads are on TV, weight loss, exercise, cars, TVs, and, and many people vow to do something new because it is a new year. They, they, they have resolutions. They, they vow to, to get rid of old habits and start new ones. Now, one of the habits I hope that you'll start this year is, is reading through the Bible and, and continuing it. Come, Jan come, come July, the treadmills and, and the, the exercise machines and probably the, the gym memberships will We'll go on use the, the weight machines and the treadmills will be out at garage sales. And whether we complete them or not, we usually begin the year with a plan or we have goals in mind. Well, the beginning of the year is a good time for all of us to check the map of God's word to see if we're headed in the right direction. See if we're on the right road, because that's what you look at a map for. How do we get from point A to point B? Are we on the right road to get from point A to point B? And that's what God's Word does for us. Now, there's nothing wrong with asking this question, and it's a question that we need to ask ourselves every now and then. Where are we in our life? To ask, where are we headed? And is there any difference between God's plans for my life and my own agenda. And here's the big one to ask. Will the road that we're on, will the path that we're following, are the things that we're doing, will it lead to heaven or someplace else? And I hope you've asked these questions before. And, and if you haven't, ask them Ask yourself these questions this week. There's two types of priorities that we all have and live by. There are temporary priorities, the ones we live like because nothing is permanent in this life. And then there are eternal priorities. We have eternal priorities because God has given them to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He has made everything appropriate in its time. He being God. He 
has also put eternity in their hearts, but man cannot discover the work of God, the, discover the work God has done from beginning to, to end. God has put eternity in our hearts. We've been created with a spiritual desire that nobody and nothing can satisfy. It only comes through God. Blaise Pascal, the mathematician, may have had this verse in mind when he said, There is a God-shaped vacuum in the heart of every person which cannot be filled by any created thing. But only by God, the Creator, made known through Jesus. And for that reason, that emptiness that we have makes us search for what's missing. And in fact, that search for what's missing gets a lot of people in trouble. Or it causes them to live a lifestyle that causes harm to themselves because if you're not filling it with God <coughs> there's simply nothing else that can substitute for it or fill it and one of the best things that helps us to avoid chasing the wrong things is having our priorities right Paul's letters in the New Testament encourage us to examine the priorities of life, especially the priority of each one of our lives. So this morning we're looking at Paul's letter to Timothy and, ask, and answering the question going into the new year, are we living for just ourselves or are we living for God? Paul says in these verses, right before these verses in chapter 6 verses 11 through 12 but you man of God run from these things and pursue righteousness godliness, faith, love endurance and gentleness fight the good fight for the faith take hold of eternal life that you were called to and have made a good confession about in the presence of many, of many witnesses. So there are things that we should, should not do or pursue, and there are things that we should be pursuing. Righteousness, godliness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. And then Paul tells us over in 1 Corinthians, Chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, fire will, re will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. First, the foundation that we must build on is Jesus Christ. Paul tells us there will come a time of fire or testing, a judgment day to see what kind of work each builder has done. Everyone's work Everyone's work will be put through the fire to see whether or not it keeps its value. If the, if the work survives the fire, then the builder will receive a reward. See, we can make a living. We can live life and leave God out of it. Many people often try, but there's that God-shaped vacuum. So if we make a living and leave God out of it, are we truly living 
life. The Bible tells us to put our treasures up in heaven. And we do that by living with the right priorities. Paul is telling Timothy and us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 18 and 19, instruct them to do what is good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good reserve for the age to come, so that they may take a hold of life that is real. We often struggle between our own priorities and doing what God wants. It's like the Indian chief that was telling his young braves about their inner struggle. And the chief said, it's like two dogs fighting inside of us. There's a good dog who wants to do what is right, but the other dog always wants to do what is wrong. Sometimes the good dog seems to be winning and is stronger, but sometimes the bad dog is stronger and is winning. And so one of the young braves asked him, who will win in the end? And the chief said, the one that you feed. As we look at our priorities in life, we may be feeding the wrong dog. It's like those old cartoons, you know, you had the good angel up on your shoulder, you had the bad angel over here, and they, well, it's, one would say, don't do it, don't do it, and the other one would say, ah, do it, it doesn't matter. And that's our struggle. We have our priorities, and we have the priorities of doing what God wants. Now, as we look over our priorities in life, history tells us that there were 11 millionaires on the Titanic when it sank. One of the few millionaire survivors was Major A.H. Puchin. He left $300,000 of his money jewelry and securities in a box in his cabin. He said the money seemed a mockery at that time. I picked up three oranges instead. Someone has said having the wrong priorities in life is like buttoning up your coat and missing the first button or misbuttoning the first button. If you get that first button wrong, all the others line up according to that misplaced <coughs> first one. In the same way, if we get that first button right, all the other things line up the way they're designed to. This is why the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. What we do for God has eternal reward. And God warns us, take a good look at your priorities. Making yourself number one doesn't bring contentment. Over in the Old Testament, Paul, God has a, a warning for people who only live for themselves. It's found in Haggai chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Now the Lord of hosts says this, Think carefully about your ways. 
You have, plant, you have planted much, but harvested a little. You eat, but never have enough to be satisfied. You drink, but never have enough to become drunk. You put on clothes, but never have enough to get warm. The wage earner puts his wages into a bag with a hole in it. The Lord of hosts says this, think carefully about your ways. Think carefully about your ways. There are three priorities that we must get right that God wants us to focus on. The first one is our schedule. What do we spend most of our time doing? And for whom? Charles Francis Adam, a 19th century politician and diplomat, went fishing with his son one day. His son, Brooke Adams, kept a diary in which he wrote, went fishing with my father, the most wonderful day of my life. Well, his father, Charles, also kept a diary. And on that day, he wrote, went fishing with my son today, a day wasted. How much of your time do you give to God? Do you consider it wasted time? Brooke certainly didn't consider it as wasted as, as a son spending time with his father. The second priority is our spending. Would we be embarrassed if God was looking and standing in front of us at what we bought and how much we spent? Our checkbook is a record of the priorities in our life. Our, our spending, our giving, shows us what is really important and what we support as a priority. Matthew tells us where our biblical priority for money should start. Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Don't collect for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But collect for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where are we investing our time and our money? In an earthly kingdom or in a heavenly kingdom? Luke tells us in chapter 12, But seek his kingdom and these things will be provided for you as well. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Make money bags for yourselves that won't grow old. An inexhaustible treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. These passages teach us two things. First, we need to invest in the kingdom of God. And the second thing is, is we've got to have the right priorities. God deserves the first and the best of our money. God should be first with our money and our giving. And that might require giving up everything we own to gain treasure in heaven. The third priority is our speech. We will be judged by our words. Spiritual things excite us or bore us. To test the condition 
of our hearts, Jesus said in Luke chapter 6. A good man produces good out of the good storeroom of his heart. An evil man produces evil out of the evil storeroom. For his mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I say? Are you producing good things? Are you speaking good things? Are you doing good things? Is your life showing others what condition your heart is in? Is the life we're living currently showing others what our temporary and eternal priorities really are? And if we're not, then today, this year, would be a good time to change them. To have the right priorities, the priorities that God wants us to live and love and show to others. Amen. Our closing hymn is number... 70, holy, 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 would you please stand, number 70. <laughs>